This is a Witch Space Special Bulletin. I'm Commander Burr. Frontier just announced some details for the upcoming Beta 2 of Fleet Carriers which starts on the 11th of May and we're going to break down the important changes in that announcement for you now and we also have some really important details on how the Beta will end. If you've not been able to afford a carrier in either of the Beta tests previously but still wanted to try carriers out then stick around for that. So without any further ado here's what's been announced. The full beta period will run from the 11th of May until the 26th of May and will see all three platforms participating ...PC, PlayStation and Xbox. PC players will be able to download the beta through their usual launchers. For console commanders the process is slightly different and there's a link in the description of this very video that will guide you through that process. Changes in the upcoming beta that have been announced so far are as follows. Universal Carta Graphics are available as an optional service. Decommissioning a fleet carrier will now refund the full cost of the carrier with the only reductions to that refund being any unpaid debt from the carriers upkeep in the case of an automatic decommissioning or a fixed static fee when the carrier is voluntarily decommissioned. The automated decommission and refund replaces the previously somewhat punitive decommissioning system and should go some way at least to easing the communities concerns around that particular system. The announcement also includes a brief explanation of why the decommissioning system is necessary in the first place. The bottom line is that the game can actually sustain as many carriers as there are commanders but there is a finite amount of parking space for those carriers around bodies in a system. In busy or popular systems or systems with carrier construction facilities the lack of a decommissioning system would see dormant and derelict carriers littering and indeed blocking the spaceways ...preventing active carriers from actually using them. The next change was a biggie. Module and ship storage for the owner of the carrier will now be a default feature of the carrier. If carrier owners want other commanders to use the carrier for ship and module storage then that will still be a purchasable upgrade. This essentially means that your fleet carrier can now carry your fleet at the very least without an upgrade being needed making it you know a fleet carrier. An issue that was possibly one of the biggest feedback generators from the previous beta. The tritium fuel consumption of the carriers has been reduced by approximately half a carrier with a full fuel tank previously could do two 500 light year jumps on that tank before it was dry giving it an effective range of around 1000 light years before you needed to refuel the thing. Assuming the depot facility hasn't changed then the carrier will now have a range somewhere in the region of 2000 light years before you'll need to find some tritium for it. This is still a test and Frontier have stated that this figure might not yet be fixed and they're still looking to find the sweet spot. The base cost of a carrier is still 5 billion credits and Frontier are keeping that cost for most of Beta 2 in order to properly evaluate the system in realistic conditions with realistic amounts of carriers. However they have announced that towards the end of the beta they will be having a beta blowout period during which you'll be able to purchase a carrier for just 1 million credits. That means that just about everyone will be able to buy a carrier towards the end of the beta. If you thought the carrier facility systems were rammed with carriers during the original beta in the blowout period for beta 2 it's likely you'll be able to walk from the arrival point in the system to the carrier yards if you so desire. There's no mention of some of the other big gripes from the previous beta being addressed yet stuff like carrier cargo to tritium depot fuel movement meaning you or someone else will still need to be at your carrier to keep it fuelled or indeed the much requested ability to schedule multiple jumps. But those niggles aside it is encouraging to see the decommission system having its fangs clipped and the fleet carrier being able to cart around the owners fleet and modules without an upgrade being necessary. And that fuel efficiency tweak should mean a few less trips to an ice ring to find tritium. So how do these changes make you feel about carriers now? Will you be buying one in the beta or the full game based on what we know at the moment? Is the beta blowout period going to be relevant to you and will you be buying a bargain basement capital class vessel while the pilots federation are feeling generous? Let us know in the comments below. 
That's it for now. Thanks very much for watching. We'll be back later this week with more videos. Until then 07 CMDRs follow the greens on the way out and do keep clear of the toast rack. We very much look forward to seeing you next time.